with every priest, you know, we call we call them father. With Father Buckley, I can say he is a father. He's a father to all of the students here on campus, and he's his father especially to me. He makes it seem like you are the most important person to him right then. You oftentimes will see a twinkle in his eye, and you know that that twinkle is there because he truly has the spirit of Christ within him, and he really is seeking to share that with all those that are around him. St. Ignatius said that the Jesuits were more like the shock troopers of uh, the, the church. The older orders had, uh, were like the artillery and the infantry and so forth. We were the shock troopers. We, we go where we're needed. My name is uh, Cornelius Buckley and uh, I'm a, a Jesuit priest and I'm from, originally from, I was born in Los Angeles, but uh, I grew up in Northern California, so I consider San Francisco the, my city. Father Buckley is my uncle, and he is now the, I always get this wrong, the patriarch of our family. I, I can't really remember my earliest impression of him. Once he was at USF especially, we spend, he spent a fair amount of time with us. I was very fortunate that I got to go to school on the same campus where he was assigned. Back in the uh, early 70s, Maureen and I were very good friends and uh, Uncle Mike uh, would, would spend time with, with the family at the house. Um, I got to see him in many roles there um, as an older brother, uh, as someone that the, the kids, you know, the, there's 12 kids in the Buckley family that the kids would look up to as a mentor. I met him as a 67. I was a Jesuit scholastic, not a priest, at the University of Santa Clara. Uh, I took him on a motorcycle ride up on Highway 17. I'm not sure if he was more stupid or I was more stupid, but anyway, uh, hit a piece of gravel, went down, and we both have scars. So I told him, well, last night, I had a street fight of a scooter. I fell off my scooter last night in the rain. So we brought back memories of Father Buckley when we did that together. He was on the back. When they hired me, they said, uh, uh, it would be for two years uh, because I was, uh, well, nearing middle age at that time. And uh, I uh, have stayed on ever since, but uh, I've been very happy here. It's a very, very happy. It's the crowning point of my career, so to speak, is being Thomas Aquinas College. It's everything I think that, uh, that a good college should be, is what people dream a good college should be. The purpose of this education is to help students uh, come to a deeper understanding of their faith and a deeper knowledge of, of God himself. It's crucial that we have a strong spiritual life and excellent chaplains to implement that spiritual life. Earlier in his career when he was at um, University of San Francisco and they had the San Ignatius Institute, its form he was very involved in its formation and in its early days. When we started the Institute back in 76, TAC already had been going for a couple of years. And I actually got the catalog from TAC to uh, kind of make that part of our, our curriculum. We sort of incorporate a lot of TAC great books ideas. But I think all throughout his career, almost that's what he, he might not have really thought about it early on, but that's what he really um, was looking for, really meant a lot to him. It's so enjoyable to see a priest sitting at a table with a group of college students, you know, who are in many ways generations removed, but unified in the faith. And, and we really do look to him as a spiritual guide and as a spiritual father. It's a stimulus to be around these students. I think uh, spiritually, first of all, you know, they go to mass regularly. We have uh, night prayers in the dorm. We have confessions all the time. I think they're 10 times a day when the confessions are uh, scheduled. And that's a great inspiration. That is extraordinary. But it's also uh, lived out everyday uh, Catholicism, I think. And uh, it's a kind of a preview of uh, of the next life. I think the next life really begins right now. Every time there seems to be some sort of key moment in my life, without even telling anyone, for some reason Father Buckley appears on the scene and asks, you know, how, how things are going. And I'm just thinking, this is perfect. You know, I, what, what better time to have a father figure? And I, you know, I, I didn't even have to prompt him.
But one of the things that I've gotten to know probably more in the last few years than I did for a long, long time is that he does, as Maureen said, have uh, a whole nother world um, of things that he does for people and with people that, that he does not talk about. I had to uh, go back home in the middle of each semester for the first couple of years here to get uh, CAT scans because I had cancer my senior year of high school. And whenever I was home, Father Buckley would always be sure to send me a mass card telling me that he was going to say mass for me and then call me to find out what time my CAT scan was and wake up and say mass for me whenever that time was. And it was usually pretty early in the morning because I'm Eastern time. <laughs> he actually married my parents, so I've, I've kind of known about him all of my life. They, they said that he was a character of a priest. Sometimes he'll say something and I get it the next day. And it'll take me that long to kind of process it. He is, his wit is so dry and he is so funny. But you really have to be on your game to pick it up as fast as he dishes it out. <laughs> Every year we have a, an event we call Trivial and Quadrivial Pursuits. Uh, the students form teams and one of the teams um, elected to be, uh, elected Star Wars as their theme. Uh, one, one young man came riding in in a motorcycle with uh, Darth Vader on the back of the motorcycle and lo and behold uh, when they parked the motorcycle Darth Vader got off the, the bike removed his mask and of course it was Father Buck. Uh, so everybody just roared and uh, that's that's typical of Father Buckley. He's, he's not shy about uh, lending himself to student activities and the students love his willingness to uh, support their activities and, and take part as best he can. I think that uh, the college uh, each year gives more and more promise for the future, what it's going to be like for the future, because the people who are uh, the administrators and the people who are on the board are committed. The church needs Thomas Aquinas College to stay healthy, and it can't do that without support. And to kind of carry on the memory of Father Buckley by giving a scholarship in his name, I think is a wonderful idea. He is so dedicated to educating um, students that are interested in getting educated. I, you know, anytime you give my, my uncle a gift, be it a sweater or a check, you know where it's going. And it just goes right back to, to students or friends or there's always somebody that needs it more than him, he kind of says, you know. <laughs> It's, it's in him to take care of other people, and I think that he has such a, um, a devotion to helping kids get educated, and especially the form of education that they get at Thomas Aquinas College, that I do think by contributing to the scholarship fund, you're really helping, you're contributing to him fulfilling one of his life missions. I don't just express it not to him because I don't want to make him you know, feel puffed up, but I mean, he's been a decisive influence in my own life. I mean. Without Father Buckley, I would not have gone to France. I mean, I would not have studied under Joseph Ratzinger or Father Buckley. I mean, I would have met all the people I met over there in Europe. So he really came at a turning point in my life, and uh, I've neglected him ever since, but I appreciate what he's done. He's a, he's a great a mentor to me in my duties as president. He's given me excellent advice. He's, he's encouraged me. He's given, given me consolation and I deeply appreciate that. You see in his homilies and in, in his day-to-day um, -day conversations how much he loves the Lord, and that's, that's awesome and beautiful, and it's attractive, and it really makes me as a young person, as a young woman, really desire to know and love the faith, the Catholic Church, and to work for the Church. For some reason, the class has always asked me to play Father Buckley in the entertainment. So, you know, his, his walk is easy to imitate, but Father Buckley himself is impossible to imitate because he's one of a kind and like I said he's truly a father to us all. I get more out of uh, out of life than uh, certainly I think I give life and uh, I think every day gets better. <laughs> Not only every day gets better in the uh, you know eschatological sense every day you get closer to the uh, uh, to the to the resurrection if you will your own death and burial and uh, seeing the Lord face to face but uh, there are so many other faces that you see in the meantime that are previews to that, uh, that, that great awakening. 
And so I, uh, I, I wake up every morning and thank God for the opportunity to have another day here. Uh, I hope it lasts a long time.